Thank you, and thank you for the introduction. So, <coughs> that everybody can hear me at the back of the room. Okay, thank you. So today I will work. Uh, I will present our work on programming abstraction for fault-tolerant distributed algorithm. So if you let's say you run a service over the internet, you have client in the service. If the service runs a single machine and that machine crash, well, the client cannot use the service anymore. So one of the standard solution is say, let's run our service on multiple machines. That way, if one of the machines crash, your client can still access your service through the other machines. It's called replication. But as we saw, as we saw in the previous talks, when you introduce replication, uh, that comes with its own set of challenges. Uh, one, the main one being consistency. Because if your system is stateful, and each request of the client on the different replica can change the state of the system, if you don't pay attention, your system is going to become inconsistent. So one of the standard approach uh, called state machine replication is to use an algorithm called consensus algorithm in order to make sure that the system stay in a coherent state. However, those algorithms tend to be known to be complicated to implement because they have to be correct also in the presence of crash, fault, network partition, and so on. So let me give you just a flavor of how a consensus, what a consensus algorithm looks like. So let's say you are the proposer, so you want to update, let's say agree on what should be the next request that the system process. So you cannot just simply send the request to the other machines, because for instance you send the first the request to one of the other machines, and then you crash before sending the request to the other machine. So you need to execute this more complex protocol. So in a first phase, which is this prepare and promise, you are going to say to the other machine, hey, I want to make a new, uh, to uh, process a new request, and the other machine are going to <coughs> promise that they will follow your, uh, agree that they will uh, accept your request. And when you have enough machine that promise that they will accept your request, typically a strict majority, then you proceed to uh, sending them the request. And when the enough machines, again, typically a strict majority, have confirmed that they receive the request, only then everybody can process the request. And this type of algorithm is used uh, in resource management in data centers, uh, for instance, Google and Microsoft, in replicated databases, uh, network file systems, uh, for instance, at BMK, we had the talk by um, Brian about the IO home fix system that inside used the Paxos algorithm. But this algorithm is also very infamous in some sense. So if we look at the literature, we have the first paper in 98. Then two years later, we have the same paper, but simpler. A few years later, Google engineers start to implement Paxos, and they publish Paxos Made Live, which is not about the algorithm itself, but what it takes to implement this algorithm and what are the challenges they have to face and overcome. And maybe we have some different try, like the raft algorithm. If Paxos is too hard, maybe we can find a simpler algorithm, and so on. So our question is, maybe this problem could be much simpler if we were to look at those systems, that maybe the implementation, in a different way. So our work is we want to build uh, this system uh, the, we present this domain-specific language called PSYNC, and the goal is to make it simple. I mean, we are not aiming at replacing Paxos, but if you want to implement Paxos, we are, we are going to get you part of the way there and simplify your life. So we want a simple, concise programming model that is easy and natural to express this algorithm. This has to be also efficiently executable, but if it's too slow, there is no point. And also, we want that the system uh, the, the language is designed in a way so that we can apply automated verification on the algorithm itself. So the main ingredient uh, on which we build uh, the domain-specific language are called communication close round, and to view the fault as an adversarial environment. So first, let me explain what is one of the challenges that you have to uh, face when you implement those systems. So, most of the programming language that you have, if you take uh, any programming language, tend to implement asynchronous model. Let's say the actor model or any formalism like normal process calculi. And so in sometimes you send a message, message eventually gets uh, received. But the problem now when you introduce fault is that let's say that you are waiting for, for a message and you did not yet receive the message. Should you wait longer because maybe the, the process was slow or the network did delay the message, which is perfectly possible in a synchronous model, or maybe this process crashed, in which case it did not even send the message, so you cannot block forever on waiting for that message. 
And actually, there is also a deeper theoretical reason is that you can show, for instance, that consensus, this fundamental agreement problem, cannot be solved uh, when you have both asynchrony and fault. So somewhere here, one of the, the takeaway uh, of this result is that some notion of time is needed if you want to reach agreement in fault tolerant system. So then the first idea we're going to use <coughs> is uh, an idea proposed by Eli Gaffney, which is would it be much simpler if an asynchronous system is actually a synchronous system where you have an environment, an adversary, that will just perturbate the synchronous system. So let's look at an asynchronous execution, and we see that the third process, for instance, does not seem to be doing anything. Maybe it's slow, maybe it's crashed. But from the point of view of the other two process, it will be exactly the same as a process that behaves perfectly normally, that will send messages, but then the environment will come in and drop those messages. Because from the point of view of the other two process, the third process, well, they just don't receive messages. And also in the slide before, we saw that we have to make this choice about not always waiting for messages, and sometimes we can get it wrong. For instance, the message here has been delayed, and we received after we already made the choice uh, to pass, uh, I mean, to, to not, not to wait for this message. It could be much simpler if we just assume that this message was dropped. So for the actual formalization, uh, we use a model called the herd of model, which uh, models this adversary by this herd of set which act as filter over the set of messages, and they are non-determinately uh, assigned. And depending on the model of the environment, you can restrict and put liveness assumptions over those sets. The second element was that in order to be able to maintain some kind of this uh, you know, illusion of synchrony, we have to structure the algorithm in a specific way. So this way is called communication flows round. So here we saw the, the, the picture of the Paxos algorithm with this asynchronous vertical line. So now we kind of really look like a synchronous system. And the specific property of the way we decompose is that the messages or the communication, they don't cross the line. So in some sense, every message it send and receive within the same round. So in some sense, round will provide this you know, logical unit of time in, that we need in order to solve, let's say, consensus algorithm. But it's stronger than that. It's also propose, uh, provide some scope for the messages. So that when you know that, for instance, a message sent in the prepare round has to be received also in this prepare round. And for the granular message receptions, uh, in, our, in our language, uh, all the message, so you receive all the message, um, so the, the algorithm will accumulate message over the, we receive more than one message during one round, but it will deliver all the messages at the same time as a set. So that's also the granularity of the message, how you process messages. So more concretely, the, the structure of, <coughs> in this model, you will structure an algorithm. So first you need an interface, so how the client, so you don't just solve consensus for solving consensus, but for instance, in a network process, a, a distributed databases, you need to, for instance, to agree on which uh, transaction to commit. So you need to some of give the system some values and say, here's the transaction I want to commit, and the system at some point has to give back, okay, you can commit or you should abort. So that's part of the interface. Then we have a set of uh, local variables, an initialization functions, and a sequence of round. The round being parameterized by a type T. And the rounds are very simple. They just need to provide two functions, which are the dual of, of each other. So first, the send function uh, is going to read the local variables and produce a partial mapping from process ID, the destination of the message, and type T, which is the payload of the message. And the update function is the dual. So it will receive uh, a mapping from process ID, which will be the sender of the message, uh, to the payload of the message. And uh, by processing these messages, it will update the local variable. Now, what a pro uh, let me tell you what a program means in this model. So here we have a block step of synchronous semantics. So everybody starts by executing the initialization functions. In the case of the consensus algorithm, you, that's how you receive the initial value or the proposal that you want to do. Then everybody starts moving to the first round, uh, apply the send functions, and then here is this uh, environment, this herd of that act as filter and decide which messages are going to be delivered and which message are going to be dropped. And here, by changing the power of the environment, we can change some model different degree of synchrony in the system. For instance, the asynchronous environment is allowed to drop potentially every messages. 
On the other hand, a synchronous environment cannot drop any message at all. So that's how the same model somehow can unify both synchrony and asynchrony. And then, after we have received the message, we just call the update functions, move to the next round, and repeat this process. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, our programs have this finite number of runs. So what happens when you, let's say you have R runs, so when you reach the end of the sequence of runs, you go back to the beginning of the sequence. For instance, in the case of consensus, maybe something failed that was a network partition and you didn't manage to reach a decision, so we just retry. And here, I mean, this semantic is really uh, lockstep or synchronous. But when we want to, if we want to execute this, the network does not provide you a synchronous, you don't have a synchronous network, you have a commodity network. So we want to um, execute this over a system which is not synchronous and still provide liveness guarantees. So before I explain who, how we do, uh, do that, I'll just uh, give you a concrete example of how you would write uh, an algorithm. So here it's called, this one is called last voting, which is a variation of Paxos, and here I'm just giving you the first round of the algorithm. So you declare uh, new rounds, you need to give the, the type of the payload of the messages during those runs. Here we have an integer and a timestamp. And those two send and update functions, here the send function just send to the coordinator uh, a value, the value stored in variable x and the timestamp. The update functions uh, takes the message uh, received. And if your ID is the coordinator, so the ID variable is a, a built-in variable in the system that tells each process its own process ID. So you can test whether you're the coordinator. And you check also how many messages you received. And here we have this variable n, which is also built into the system that tells you how many processes there are in the system. So here you only do, uh, pro you process the message if you have more, a strict, ma you receive a strict majority of messages. In which case you just take the value uh, with the maximum time stand and store it into the vote variable and update you, this variable commit equal true that you will use in the next round that to know that something <laughs> could happen and you can continue. So now the question is how do we execute this, uh, maintain this view of our distributed system which is not synchronous. So here we, the, the idea is that we are not going to preserve the exact semantic but we are to preserve only what matters. So in a distributed system what matters is the local view of each process. So the message that you send and the message you receive. And that's what uh, our runtime will uh, preserve. And somehow that's here, that's where you use this environment I should say default, for instance, to model this low process or asynchrony by just assuming a correct process and dropping messages. And uh, also since the semantic is lockstep and the runtime is uh, asynchronous, we also have to introduce stuttering. So, so the runtime algorithm is actually fairly simple, is that in the normal flow of the, the sem semantics of the language, every process send of this kind of loop of sending an update moving to the next round. So, but something needs to happen uh, bef between the send and the update. So here we need to introduce an additional loop that will basically accumulate messages for some period of time. Uh, and here the, there is a timeout par which is a parameter of the system. So that will be perfectly sufficient if your system was completely synchronous. But if it's not synchronous, what can happen is that some process might be faster or slower and they might drift apart. So you might be in the situation where, let's say I'm executing and currently at round 10 and I receive a message from round five. So that message came too late. In that case, I'm just going to pretend that this message did not even arrive. And then you can have the dual situation is that I'm currently at round five and I receive a message which is stuck for round 10. So in that case, I just bypass the normal control flow of the execution uh, until I reach and back in synchron uh, synchronized with the system. Okay. So, this can be done not only for, you can not only preserve let's say, safety property of the system, but as, uh, making some additional assumptions over the model of the network called partial synchrony. Uh, we show in the paper how you can, what re are the requirements that needs to be satisfied by this timeout, how you can complete this timeout in order to also preserve liveness. What I, what I mean to preserve liveness is that, assuming that for instance less than n over two machine crashes, so you want to show that the system eventually deliver more than n over two messages. So you, that you are not allowed to always continue to, for instance, drop messages. And so we have shown this in this which 
uh, work on the process executing uh, the, the algorithm, but you don't want to write your whole system in this model. So you don't, for instance, in the case of consensus algorithm, you only, and the uh, database, you only need to use it when you want to commit transaction. So the rest of the application somehow is not written in this, but as like a normal program that will communicate with the consensus algorithm through this uh, initial, for instance, value event and decision value. And we can show that uh, we also get some results about uh, of this observational refinement, uh, which is preserved by the runtime compared to the semantic of the language, uh, with the assumption that the client only way of synchronizing is to use the consensus algorithm, and they don't have uh, any other way of exchanging information. So more concretely, it means that uh, operations across client commutes. So now the, the question is, one of the motivation was to have a model which is simpler that we can apply automated verification. So what is actually simpler in this model? So if you consider normal asynchronous system, you have this problem of interleavings. Here now the semantic is lockstep, so the interleaving problem is actually gone. Also, if you do invariant based uh, generations, uh, like we do, your problem is that when you want to state the global invariant of your system, you have not only to look at the state of the processes, but you also need to look at the state of the network. But here, if we ask the invariant a special point, which is a boundary between two rounds, we know by definition of the rounds which are communication calls, that somehow there is no message at that point in the system. So our invariants become actually much simpler. Now there is a small catch, because if you do verification on the log test semantic, you, provide, you prove global property of the system, but we saw the runtime only uh, preserve indistinguishability, which is the local views. So not every property uh, might be preserved by the runtime uh, execution. So property have somehow to be robust with respect to this indistinguishability uh, relation. But in general, most of the property, like consensus, are, uh, are closed under indistinguishability. The intuition is that you want to eventually reach a decision, but if you reach the indecision, the decision earlier or later, it does not matter. That's somehow related to the stuttering introduced by uh, this relation. So we have implemented uh, an embedding of this domain specific language in Scala. The code is available online. And we have uh, a few elements to evaluate. First, is it a suitable abstraction uh, in general? for such systems. Because for the moment, I spoke only of one problem consensus and one algorithm Paxos. So we implemented a few algorithms. The first three are actually consensus. The rest are a weaker version of agreement problem. And we see that there is this important part, which is when you read the paper that presents this algorithm, those the, the paper present the algorithm already use a round structure. And we see that in most of the case, the algorithms in the literature are presented naturally in this run structure. So that's a very good fit. There is a few algorithms that use more an event-driven way of being presented, but they, are, they, are easy, they can be easily uh, cast into runs. And then there is a second interesting point is that many of these algorithms uh, here, by asynchronous, I mean safe in an asynchronous system. So even though the algorithm is almost safe in an asynchronous system, they are kind of presented in a way which is inherently synchronous. Uh, the second element is that we compare against different domain-specific language for this type of uh, distributed application to see you know, if the abstraction introduces any overhead compared to uh, these other languages which use uh, an asynchronous abstraction. So here we see that most of the time uh, we don't introduce any overhead. We tend to be, let's say, on the average. Uh, some, uh, two exceptions is might be Verdi, which is not uh, the Paxos algorithm, but another algorithm raft, which does a bit more, so it, they have a slightly longer code. But also the interesting part is most of the system, when they have verification, uh, due to the <coughs> inherent difficulty of the asynchronous model, they are limited to interactive verification. Here on the other hand, due to this kind of nice slope step model, we can apply uh, automated verification. So here I'm uh, saying semi-automated because we still need the user to provide the inductive invariance. And finally, there is the question of performance. So we compare against uh, some lower level, uh, low level, so all those three are low level implementation of Paxos algorithm. Uh, this one actually is the only uh, 
implementation of Paxos that we found on this table that somewhat uses kind of the same assumptions over the, uh, let's say, the same setting that we can compare in a fair way uh, for the throughput. So here it's a distributed key value star using consensus uh, to maintain uh, agreement, I mean, coherent set of the system. And we see that compared to the fastest implementation, which was published at SOSP, where still, uh, there is still some cost to the abstraction, which is a factor three. But compared to also other implementation, which are all published results, that cost is not too high. So maybe uh, roughly, the, can just quickly explain. So the cost of the abstraction is that uh, you saw that those algorithms are very simple. They don't do much computation. So all some of the cost of the algorithm so there is the network, but there is also within the machine uh, the memory management, basically moving uh, buffers using uh, star packets around. And in normal synchronous model, for instance, you can process message as they come and save some buffer. Here we accumulate message and deliver all of them to message, so we have slightly larger memory constraint. Okay. Uh, finally, about the question of uh, verification, you know, what is the size of the invariant that we require in order to apply verification? So for the case of last voting, which is the variation of path source, uh, the invariant is still fairly large. It's about 35 lines of code. But compared to the amount of work required to do interactive verifications of such algorithm, uh, this is a uh, substantial improvement. Okay. So in conclusion, we propose this uh, domain-specific language that uses this kind of higher level synchronous abstraction of an asynchronous faulty system in order to simplify the implementation of alternate algorithms, uh, which, and also we provide a runtime, the characterization how the runtime implements the semantic of the language, uh, and the, the evaluation of the efficiency of the runtime, and all, uh, proof of concept implementation of automated verification on the system. And that is, thank you. Um, hi. Um, so I was wondering, this this lockstep thing is is, is it seems um, it would be hard for a reactive system, which is getting input from outside and reacts when the when the messages come. Let's say like a eventually consistent store or a causally consistent store. It would be very hard to think of these algorithms as lockstep. So I'm just wondering, are there classes of algorithms which do not fit this framework or? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Maybe two points is that uh, the first version is that maybe how we do it. Uh, I mean, let's say in general, those system, for instance, uh, there is two way. Let's say of so you receive a request, you start the request. How do you know like that the other replica in the system still like, kind of also at the same point in the program? So here in most of the system, if you let's say execute continuously, as soon as you have finished process one request, you get ready for the next one. So it's more the other replica can, let's say, uh, eagerly start waiting for the message. Because in some sense, the big system is someone never terminating. It's just processing requests one right. after the when other. When one process re receives a request, uh, while it's doing it, another process could receive a request, right? So it's very hard to think of it as. So if the requests are conflicting, somehow the two process will, during the, that's some of the logic of the algorithm, where the two requests will be proposed, let's say, using consensus, but only one of them will be agreed. So if you process the one every day three, and then you put the second one, let's say, for the next round of consensus. So, yeah. Nice work. Thanks for the talk. Um, my question is about synchrony and asynchrony. Uh, you referred to the FLP result that uh, consensus is impossible in an asynchronous network, but it, there is a very important side condition to that, and that's determinism of the algorithm. If the algorithm is deterministic, it's impossible. But if it's randomized, it is possible. And there are actually algorithms yeah. for consensus that can work in the asynchronous network if, uh, you, and, and they do use randomization. So, and, and synchronous networks are only possible if we can bound the communication time. So I'm thinking maybe the asynchronous network would be a better choice, but I want to see what you think about it. Thanks again for the talk. So, yeah, I mean, that's a very good point, uh, for instance. Here, all the, this algorithm for, let's say, randomized consensus <coughs> or uh, case set agreement, which is a version where you can bound the number of the divergence where you allow not one decision. I mean, consensus is one set agreement. Uh, they also tend to, I mean, they tend to be uh, solvable in an asynchronous system. But uh, the, so the reason, I mean, the intuition is that consensus has this, 
I mean, state machine replication indeed is for deterministic uh, algorithms. So you need a more determin so when you process a request, the effect of the request might be deterministic across the state, uh, all the states. So maybe on the question then why this kind of synchronous lockstep uh, model, that in practice, if you look at the literature, there is so much work on consensus that seems to be this kind of fundamental agreement. Because for instance, many of these algorithms, they exist, they have this nicer property of being solvable asynchronously, but it's not clear in practice how you would use them. On the end, consensus has this nice property that people intuitively understand what it means. So we thought, you know, shut, shut, <laughs> our mo model should somehow be able to cleanly uh, do this problem. So maybe the, for the weaker version, the synchronous abstraction might be overkill because those might be also solvable with weaker models. But somehow we want to be able to kind of cleanly capture also consensus. Maybe. Okay, maybe we can discuss more on that. Uh, Isaac Schaff, Cornell. Uh, I'm curious about round numbers. So if our network is in fact asynchronous and if our programs have a finite number of rounds but repeat if they fail whatever it is they're doing, uh, is it possible that an exceptionally late uh, message will arrive from a previous iteration of uh, the round numbers and then say round three arrive the next time round three is executed and if so, can that mess things up? So the messages are a very good point. So the messages, the runtime tag, the, the messages, so I've some information of messages, so there is not only the round number, uh, but there is also some instance number, like which decision you are making. So in general, so when you move, okay, so the point. So the, the round number actually here will increase monotetically. So in some sense, as soon as you are visiting the same instance of the algorithm, even though you go back to the same, you still increase the round number. But then there is a the question is that if you, in, uh, we, uh, then you finish a decision, start a new instance of the consensus for the, to agree on the decision, but there is still this last message that come later. So for that, we tag with uh, an instance number that prevents these kind of messages cross execution. So we have this additional um, check in the, the runtime uh, to avoid exactly this situation. Thank you. <laughs>